Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, the RuneScape Historian, back with a new video. So I've been gone about a month, a little over actually at this point, and I wanted to make it a little bit longer for you guys. So if you notice from the title, it's uh, RuneScape Facts, but I'm going to try and limit it to early RuneScape Facts. So I'm going to do 2001 or so to 2008. I know some people wouldn't consider that early RuneScape, but I also wanted to make the video much longer for you guys because I had been gone that extra time. Oh, before we get started, I'm opening a Discord server for the YouTube channel so I can communicate with you guys easier without sifting through a bunch of comments. Uh, just if you guys wanted to talk to me in kind of a smaller group and uh, be social while you play the game, I think that'd be really cool. So yeah, 2001 to 2008 facts. Let's get into it. The Dragon Axe upon release and for a while after was equal to the Rune Axe in terms of woodcutting speed. It only required 41 woodcutting just like the Rune Axe as well. It was still fairly pricey back then despite it being the same as the Rune Axe as people seemed to care more about aesthetics back then, in my opinion at least. This is also why many treasure trail items held a higher value for the time in early RuneScape 2, yet when old school released those same items were 20k or less. I'm of course referring to cavaliers, boaters, and the like. I remember a black cavalier being over 1 mil and being peak fashionscape in 2000. Nowadays it's worth a small fraction of that on old school, and I believe has its current price of 1.5 mil on RS3 due to the invention skill. The axe was also much more rare as Dagonoth kings back then were pretty scary to the average player. The dragon axe was eventually buffed to require 61 woodcutting, it was also given a faster woodcutting speed and held the title of the best woodcutting axe in the game for a very long time. After the buff, the price skyrocketed to over 3 million coins for a time which was very expensive back then. To put this number into perspective, the best shield pre-Defender and pre-Dragonfire shield was seen as the Dragon Square. Sure, Crystal Shield was a thing, but it degraded and lost stats each time it did so. The D-Square was stable anywhere from 2.4 mil to 3 mil at any given time around 2005 to 2006. The Dragon Axe climbed above that for a while. This illustrates the demand for the woodcutting axe at the time. There was also that rarity factor I briefly mentioned too due to DK's being hard content for the time. The early iteration of the metal plate body in RuneScape 2 had longer arms that stretched down past the bottom of the plate body. This extended to the treasure trail counterpart such as gilded, trimmed rune, and the like. I'm unsure why this was changed, maybe it was thought to look goofy in the inventory, I'm not sure. I sort of like the way the plate body used to look. While we're at it, another significant graphical update early on in RuneScape 2 was that magic logs used to look similar to willow logs. This led tons of people to getting scammed when they were trying to buy magic logs, especially in bulk. At the time, magic logs went for 1k to 1.2k or so, give or take. Willow logs typically floated around 30 GP each, leading to a huge loss if you were buying in bulk. Jagex changed it to the sparkly version we know now on Old School and RS3 primarily because of these scams going on. The Crystal Bow, an iconic weapon of the early RuneScape 2 days, degraded, which it still does to my knowledge but it degraded in 10 parts, but the difference is, each time it degraded, it lost a good portion of its stats. This meant that when the crystal bow was, let's say, 2 out of 10, or 3 out of 10, it was fairly bad. This got briefly reintroduced back into the game when Old School RuneScape was released. To get around this, Jagex had a Nightmare Zone imbue that made it to where the stats didn't fall upon degradation. If I remember correctly, they made it to where the stats never fell during degradation at a later date and removed the imbue from the Nightmare Zone shop. In 2008, when Dragon Claws were released alongside Tormented Demons, they were about 50 to 200k GP in the Grand Exchange, somewhere within that range. A few of them actually got sold for around this price as people saw the new item was a Dragon item, which they weren't impressed with at the time and that it was Claws, one of the worst types of weapons due to the low raw stats when compared to other weapon types. Once the special attack was tested and their power was discovered as a spec weapon, the price shot up immensely. The Claws became a staple in PvP worlds in 2008 and even see frequent usage today in the old school version of the game. When the transition was made from RuneScape Classic to RuneScape 2, everyone's items were moved to RuneScape 2. 
there was a temporary function implemented onto the website that allowed players to move their items back to Classic if they so wished to. Their stats were also copied from Classic. While we're on the topic, what would initially be known as the pink party hat on Classic was changed to purple during the transition to RuneScape 2 and was officially named Purple Party Hat. On Classic, none of the party hats had their color in their name. They were all simply just called Party Hat. I guess that's a little bonus one. Another bonus is that the purple or pink party hat whatever you want to call it at the time, was the most expensive party hat. But due to a duplication glitch in Classic, it actually became the cheapest for a very long time. I looked into the prices now on RuneScape 3, and purple actually now beats out the yellow and green party hats. Shortly after the game's release, a little-known random event known as the Tangle Vine was added. It was little known because it was quickly removed. It was mentioned on the main page in the updates, but as most players did not read the updates at the time, they didn't know what to do if the random event happened. The vines damaged anyone rapidly that was moving while in their presence. All the player had to do to survive this random event was stand still. Needless to say, they didn't, and people lost their items. The random was removed due to complaints and people dying. Plate skirts had different stats than plate legs initially in RuneScape 2. I believe they were lower if my memory serves correctly. This was fixed around two months after the launch of RuneScape 2. Underground Pass was the last piece of content converted from RuneScape Classic. Damn, this quest was awful on Classic. Especially the repetitiveness of failing obstacles, falling all the way down to the bottom of the pit, and having to walk back. No running on Classic made this way, way worse. But after this was released in RuneScape 2, then they could move on to unique content. Castle War's decorative armor, the ugly red set, used to have the same stats as mithril armor. This was changed to steel as to not devalue mithril armor for newer players. This was still the case when OSRS was released and remains true to this day. It has the stats of steel. In order to have mithril stats, the white decorative armor is needed, which is the tier above red. Speaking of castle wars, initially it was possible to obtain your own flag and then run back into your base freely without it returning to that flag stand. Needless to say, this was not intended as it allowed people to go up and down, up and down the stairs rapidly to avoid being hit, as well as allowing their teammates to continually fight off enemies with the close respawn in the base, whereas, you know, your enemies would have to run all the way across the map from their base. When Castle Wars was first released, your team needed to be in possession of their own flag in order to score a point with the enemy's flag before an update in mid-December of 2004, which changed the scoring system to what it currently is. Jagex saw a bunch of low-scoring games and wanted a way to make scoring feel faster. They also wanted a less convoluted and more straightforward way to play the game. The Dragon Scimitar was not released with Monkey Madness. It was released almost five months after the quest with the quest requirement to wield it. The Blessed Dragon Hide from Clue Scrolls initially had no defense requirement, leading to defense peers being able to wear the entire set, including the body. The armor was changed shortly afterwards to require 40 defense. Before March 20th, 2007, rearranging items in your inventory would cause your character to stop whatever activity they were doing. Fishing, combat, woodcutting, etc. would all be interrupted if you wanted to just move something within your inventory or organize the inventory. Super annoying. The world hop in early RuneScape 2 required the player to log all the way out and go back to the world select screen. This is assuming, of course, you didn't have a certain link to a certain world um, favorited, because if that was the case, you could just go to your bookmarks, copy that link, and then paste it into the uh, URL section, and it would go to that world if you had it saved. A lot of people did this with World 2. Much like today in OSRS, the player limit per world was 2,000. World 2, the trading world, was perpetually full of players during peak hours. This required players to either keep refreshing on the world select screen to even select the world, once the player selected the world, the game would load and the player could be hit with the world is full please try again later message for minutes at a time. To get around the first part, players copied the URL to World 2 and favorited it. It still didn't save them from having to spam click the login button though, but it did cut out the first part of refreshing the world list. The Fountain of Heroes recharged Amulet of Glories in noted form for an unspecified amount of time. This was fixed in mid-2007. Initially, there was not an animation for stringing bows. This made it look like a lot of people were bank standing even though they were actually skilling. Crossbows in general used to be pretty useless. There weren't any of the bronze through rune metal crossbows available. There was just the regular crossbow and the phoenix crossbow. 
which had bad bonuses and the bolt selection was really awful consisting of just opal tipped regular bolts, barbed bolts, and just crossbow bolts. Nobody really used these at the time and they were extremely, extremely bad. Some players would try to use certain random events to their advantage. For example, there was a random event that caused a player's axe head to fly off to a random tile nearby. The same goes for mining. If that player was AFK and not paying attention, another player could start lighting fires, for example, was really popular with the woodcutting skill, to try and cover up where the axe had landed. In the case of the dragon axe, if they picked it up before the owner, they gained a few million GP in profit, seeing as how dragon axes after the buff went up to over 3 mil at one point. All they had to do was get a regular axe handle by breaking a low tier axe through the same random event and attaching that handle to the dragon axe head. Then they had a full dragon axe. This was something that was seen with the woodcutting skill over mining as there was no dragon pickaxe at the time, so if they did it to someone with mining, they might gain 30k from a rune pickaxe head not really worth the effort. Not to mention the fact if you were mining next to somebody, the chances of you having a tinderbox and logs were pretty low, as opposed to woodcutting where a lot of people carried around a tinderbox. Death Mechanics If you died in early RuneScape 2 before the introduction of gravestones in 2007, your items would appear on the floor within one minute or so. This gave rise to new forms of luring other players into dangerous areas, then looting their items before they could get back to whatever tile they died on. Seeing as how we just mentioned a random event, this means if a river troll killed someone, you could get whatever the player had if it wasn't within the three protected items. For events such as the strange plant and some of the other combat randoms, if a player got the random while inside of a building, sometimes other players would spam shut the door on them, locking them inside with the aggressive monster, and eventually causing them to die so that they could loot their items. I saw this quite a bit in Catherby within the smaller building that has the cooking range in it. In early 2008, there were gnome copters that were put near Lumbridge. Players could use the gnome copters to go on tours of members' areas. You could also see other players on their copters traveling around. These weren't actual members' areas though, but rather instances with NPCs acting like players at places like Clan Wars, Castle Wars, and Pest Control. I think the purpose of these copters was to entice F2P players to purchase membership after they saw the members' areas such as Castle Wars and Pest Control. Uh, to my knowledge, they had no other uses besides that. Scammers used to be much more prevalent before the Grand Exchange was introduced. Player-to-player -player trades were much more common, leading to malicious people to come up with ways to trick people in the trade windows. They still have plenty of ways to scam and lure modern day on both games, but only some take place inside of a trade window now. The way coin share used to work was that when a big ticket item was dropped, it would split the item into coins based on the grand exchange price and put them onto the ground to be picked up. The players would receive a message like the one on screen, and something about seeing that green message was really nice. If you didn't know, loot share was something that was added in the main RuneScape game back in 2007 to 2008. Loot share would simply drop the entire item to one player somewhat randomly, although it was based on a hidden point system. There was a fatigue system in RuneScape Classic when it was around. It was used to combat botters. Various skilling activities fatigued the player to varying degrees. When a player's fatigue reached 100%, they could no longer gain experience. To reset their fatigue back to zero, the player had to find a bed around the map somewhere in order to sleep. Sleeping required a CAPTCHA code to be solved, which was hard to automate back then. Botters and cheaters tried to combat this by using third-party cheating tools, which let the cheaters solve each other's CAPTCHAs for points. They could then use these points to get help while they botted and vice versa. Sleeping bags weren't released immediately with the fatigue system. You better have had a favorite bed picked out that was somewhat convenient to get to. Briefly mentioned this earlier, but no running on classic, only walking. This really sucked for questing or doing anything where you had to cover large distances. The Revenants released after the 2007 Wilderness PvP removal update were thought to drop expensive PKing items such as whips, dark bows, and Sarah swords. As it turns out, their best drops at the time were rare and consisted of cheap dragon items like daggers, glories, and the obsidian cape from the Revenant Orc. The Revenants also tried to mimic PK or activity to retain the danger aspect of the wilderness for adventurers. They would spawn around what were once PKing hotspots and sometimes even traveled in groups. Being NPCs though, the Revenants weren't as smart as a PKer and were typically just a nuisance to high-level players. 
although I did see them wreck unsuspecting low to mid levels on occasion. Mining an early RuneScape classic for a short period of time had soft and hard rocks. Soft rocks had a slower respawn, increased miss chance, but gave very low fatigue percent, allowing the player to mine for longer periods before having to go out and find a bed. Hard rocks gave more fatigue percent, but spawned quicker, making the player seek out a bed quicker. Both had their benefits, but were phased out when sleeping bags were brought into the game and made normal across the board. On the day of Fletching's release in 2002, trees were being cut down so quickly that for an entire day Jagex made it so that trees didn't get chopped down. This was reverted a day later after players had a chance to experience the new skill. In early RuneScape Classic, monster drops could be immediately seen by another player even if they weren't the ones to damage it or kill it. This led to drop stealing and players that would sit around like vultures waiting to swoop in and steal the drops. This was changed in May of 2001. The Calphite Queen's infamous and obnoxious barbed range attack was not part of her original kit. Initially, the KQ only used magic and melee. Players were killing her too easily according to Jagex, and they wanted to keep the prestigious dragon chain body a rare item within the game. Therefore, they added the barbed attack, which made the KQ much more difficult. An additional fact about Calphite Queen is she used to look like a black beetle in the first form and a giant wasp in the second. The attack animations were also different and can be seen in the video on screen. I guess she's a beetle in the first and a giant wasp or something in the second still, but she looked different back then. The Dragon Med Helm was the best melee helm in Classic and was also the best helm in RuneScape 2 up until the release of the Berserker Helm in late 2004. It was outclassed a bit further in 2005 with the release of Barrows, although those helmets were degradable. Players back then tried to avoid using degradables as much as possible in order to save that small amount of GP in repairs. Due to that reason, DMED still hovered between 800k to 1.2 mil even with the addition of Zerker Helms and Barrows Helms. At some point they plummeted in price as they became more common and better options such as the Helm of Knot or Nate, whatever the hell it is. RuneScape Classic was not the first iteration of RuneScape. Andrew Gower created Devious Mud in 1998. Just by looking at the few screenshots that are publicly available online, similarities can be seen between Devious Mud and RuneScape Classic, although Devious Mud was fairly bare bones in comparison. It also makes sense because Devious Mud eventually became RuneScape in late 1999 in a way after Andrew started collaborating with his brothers and doing multiple rewrites of the game. And yeah, technically this is like 1998, 1999, but I feel it belongs on the list because it did eventually become RuneScape Classic which was released in 2001. When the Draconic Visage came out, it was so rare and coveted that when players didn't get it after a while, they thought the game was broken or that they needed to do something first. Oziac and Edgeville had dialogue related to the rare Visage, so many players thought that the dialogue had to be completed before the drop was unlocked, so to speak. This eventually led to players making the joke, have you talked to Oziac on any rare drop within the game? and I think it's still somewhat of a meme nowadays. The Crystal Axe, one of the better hatchets in both Old School and RuneScape 3 nowadays, was almost released very early on into the game. The Eyes of the Glauf request was initially going to reward players with the Crystal Axe instead of the Crystal Saw. For whatever reason, they went back on releasing the axe and opted for releasing the Crystal Saw instead. To tack on to that, the Elves in the Roving Elves quest in RuneScape 2 hinted at a powerful Crystal Halberd long before its eventual release. Speaking of Halberds, from their release in September of 2004 and for a few years afterwards, one of the popular metas within the game was to utilize the Halberd's attack distance to safe spot stronger monsters. In hindsight, this was brutally slow and silly, but you saved out on spending money on those 250 GP lobsters. Players would use the halberd in this way to make money fighting black dragons, black demons, and do the slayer skill on safe spottable creatures. Like I said, slow and silly, but it was part of the game back then. The best in slot bows before the 2006 crossbow rework were the crystal bow and the carol's crossbow. Both of these weapons were powerhouses for their time. If you had a crystal bow in 2005, you were considered a higher end player. In old footage from around 2005 to 2006, most of the level 120 plus players would be using a crystal bow. The Carol's bow was less popular due to bolt racks being a pain to get in bulk and fairly expensive for the time. 
If people back then didn't want to pay a 100k Barrows repair fee, they definitely didn't want to lose out on 300 GP, 400 GP per bolt rack. The King Black Dragon was the first non-quest boss in RuneScape Classic and RuneScape 2 as it just got transferred over from Classic. In 2007, after the unbalanced trade removal update, there was a hard limit on the value difference that could be exchanged between two players. The limit eventually got bumped up gradually, but was still an extreme pain. The value was based on a player's quest points, it would also have a cooldown period as your coin limit would have to build back up or refresh. In 2008, the Tormented Demon boss was very popular due to Dragon Claws having a high value. At most bosses, when a Crasher comes, the boss is fought over in a traditional manner with the so-called winner being able to take the boss for themselves in the end. In the Tormented Demon's room, there was around 8 to 10 demons or so. What would usually happen if you ran into a Crasher or just a malicious butthole was they would run around the entire room and lure all the demons to your location to try and mess you up or get you killed. It was a crazy time there. Herbs in early RuneScape 2, as well as Classic, did not have a grimy version. They were referred to as Unidentified Herbs, or Units for short. All Unidentified Herbs shared the same item name regardless of if they were a Guam or a Renar. They were simply just called Herb, or Herb if you want to pronounce it that way. The only way to tell what kind of herb you had was to keep a stack of each Unidentified Herb. You would pull one out of a stack, and if it identified as Renar, then that whole stack was Renar's, for example, while the other stacks were a different type of herb. And yes, if you were thinking this, people tried scamming using Unids. They would charge a premium price for Unids that they swore were Renar or a higher tier in general. However, they would usually know that what they had was Guam, Terramin, or Marental, or some other low-value herb. One way to get around the scam was to have only the types of Unids you wanted noted in your inventory, so for example, if you had a stack of unidentified Renars and that's what you were buying, you would have the unidentified Renars noted in one slot of your inventory and have every other slot filled up with junk or placeholders. That way if they tried selling you anything else but unidentified Renars, then it wouldn't go through. This entry is just a speed run of some old item prices around 2006. There are definitely many more, but I just found them interesting. Dragon Legs were 2.4 mil around 2006, Dragon Square 2.4 mil. The Dragon Square was also referred to as a dragon, open bracket, close bracket, because it made a square in early RuneScape. The Carol's full set was around 1.2 mil at one point, much higher than that now. Varax was around 4 mil, Guthans 9 to 10 mil, with the spear being the bulk of that, being usually around 6 to 7 mil of that total. Amulet of Fury was around 6 million. Discontinued rare prices were also pretty bonkers in hindsight, with Halloween masks being under 10 million GP. Hardy hats were also way lower, but still very high when taking the time period into account. Clue Scrolls did not have their tier listed next to the name like they do now. They were all simply called Clue Scroll, regardless of the tier. Advanced players could just read the Clue Scroll and pretty much instantly know which tier it was based on the Clue step. If you could remember where you got the Clue, that also helped and was a great indicator of which tier it was. My veteran players will also know they were referred to as Level 1 for Easy, Level 2 for Medium, and Level 3 for Hard, whereas nowadays they're referred to as, you know, Easy, Mediums, Hard, elite and masters, but at the time there were no elites or masters. Metal dragons have a fairly classic 2007 model on old school RuneScape, but they had an even older model which looked like this. Before the RuneScape wiki, quest plugin, RuneLight in general, and the popularization of other help sites, RuneScape had their own knowledge base on the website. They had basic info on special attacks, random events, monsters, and much more. In RuneScape Classic, on AFK skills such as woodcutting and mining, the player only received one log or one fish per successful action. This wasn't very AFK at all, and there was also a decent fail chance where you get no resource and have to click again. Make X while skilling was not always around. Even the Make 5 and Make 10 options were not available on some skills for a good while into RuneScape 2. Imagine cooking, for example, and only being able to cook one fish per time. Damn. RuneScape Classic had 30 M inventory slots versus modern day RuneScape's 28. Sounds good, right? Well, not really. In Classic, there was no standalone equipment interface. Therefore, even if your equipment was equipped, it still sat in the inventory, taking up space. This led to less room for supplies, typically floating around 20 spaces for supplies after taking in the armor, amulet, 
weapon, and all that into account. The items kept on death used to be tied to an item's alchemy price rather than the actual price. This system was extremely flawed. High-valued items such as discontinued items typically only had an alchemy value of around 1 GP or so, meaning they were usually lost on death. A good example of this system is the old Dragon Battle Axe lure. Dragon Battle Axes had a street value of around 150k each, but they had a good alchemy value. Many lures would die to an unsculled player in the wilderness and drop around four noted dragon battle axes. The unsculled player that has, let's say, a whip picks up the axes. A team that was with the first guy then runs in and kills the unsculled player. Unsculled player keeps four dragon battle axes even if they had protect item on due to the battle axe having that high alc value of 120k versus the whip's 80k. Lures gain 3 mil or more from the whip and lose maybe 600k from the axes, so they profit around 2.4 mil in this example. There used to not be any sort of wall or ditch separating the wilderness from the normal RuneScape world. Needless to say, this led to a lot of luring. In very early RuneScape Classic, there was good magic and bad magic. These were separated into two different tabs and each one had its own list of spells. This got removed on May 24, 2001 with a magic update. RuneScape Classic early on had an equipment bonus called Hiding. The higher the hiding bonus, the less monsters would notice and attack a player. Hiding was seemingly removed in May of 2001. There was an unobtainable rune in RuneScape Classic. The life rune was found in the game's files, but was unobtainable. They were going to be used in summoning spells, but the idea of summoning spells was scrapped entirely. It's crazy that the summoning idea was being tossed around roughly seven years before the summoning skill would be released into the game. It kind of makes you wonder what could have been if it was released all the way back in 2001 as a form of magic, because there were some pretty cool spells in there, such as summoning a demon, I believe summoning the undead or a skeleton, and there was a few other ones in there as well. It seemed pretty interesting. Interesting. When split bark armor was released in 2004, it was touted as being very powerful and one of the most powerful magic sets. This seems funny nowadays, but makes sense as in 2004 you had no mystic armor and definitely no Aram's armor. Aram's armor was released in 05. Enchanted also wasn't released until after mystic armor as its stats were based on mystic armor. Infinity also wasn't out until early 2006, I believe January 2006. The Abyssal Whip in the very early days of RuneScape 2 had a special attack that would either hit a player's max hit or a zero. This was changed to the weird run energy special effect it has now. The old spec was deemed too overpowered, at least that's what I heard. Arguably the most famous player in RuneScape history, the name Zezima, is pronounced Zezima. This was answered in a Reddit AMA years ago. AMA stands for Ask Me Anything and someone asked about the pronunciation. I butcher this pronunciation regularly just due to habit. Pretty sure I did it the whole time during my Zezima video. An iconic player in RuneScape history, the Old Knight, tragically passed away in May of 2006. A statue in the wilderness was rebranded to commemorate him. There were no F keys in early RuneScape 2 for quick switching. In RuneScape Classic, there were no extensive stats on weapons such as stab, slash, crush, and so on. It was simply weapon aim and weapon power. The trading area before the release of the Grand Exchange was in World 2 Falador Park. It's unclear how this came to be, although from what I researched, the way it grew was when new items were released, the first players to obtain said items would pick a spot near or around the park that was empty, but still within view of the mass of players, and start selling. Initially, the selling area was relegated to being within the park gates, but as new items were released, the park ran out of space, and players ultimately billowed out into the town square and other areas. Before the release of Bandos armor in 2007, there was no leg slot that gave strength bonus. There was the fighter torso, so the Bandos chest plate wasn't the first in that department, but tacits were the first to have strength bonus in their respective slot. If you are fairly new to old school RuneScape, you might be familiar with random events, although there aren't as many available and they are optional. You can totally ignore them. In early RuneScape 2, and also in the months following the release of old school, random events were not optional and were meant to disrupt bots. They would teleport you while you were in the middle of doing something, attack you while you were skilling, and were generally annoying to the legitimate 
ultimate player base. Adding on to that last fact, there were a few random events early on in RuneScape 2 that were discontinued pretty quickly. To name a few, there was the Tangle Vine, which I mentioned earlier. It would damage you if you moved. There was also a Candlelight random event that was scrapped in early 2006. It involved players having to deal with Pious Pete, and they would have to light all of his candles, but players complained as the lights were blown out way too quickly. There was a handful of random events that never made it into the game. Sebastian No was some sort of track event involving gnomes. Then there was the Duke of Bridgelum, which involved putting dismembered cows back together in the Scape Rune world. There was also a savage bird that was never released and was going to behave similar to the swarm event that attacked players. I would pay money to have that random event in game and watch it go nuts on some low levels. In RuneScape Classic, when you were attacked by another player or monster, you were trapped into combat for three hits before you could retreat. This meant that traversing into high level areas as a low level player could be especially dangerous. Elvarg in RuneScape Classic did not have a name. It was simply called The Dragon and was the only green dragon in RuneScape at the time of its release. One of the main RuneScape Classic trading hubs was located near Drainer Village. When the agility skill was released in 2002, there were only two agility courses available. One of these for sure was the Gnome Village agility course, and the other, I believe, may have been the Barbarian course, although I could be wrong on the latter. The prestigious Onyx gem did not come out with the initial Tazar release. It was released later. Another thing is that the level 74 crafter Tazar NPCs were rumored to drop an uncut Onyx rarely. To my knowledge, this was never the case and was just a rumor. In RuneScape Classic, the Crystal Chest was permanently bugged. It was bugged to be permanently stuck open, stopping players from using a Crystal Key on it. It was suspected that this was repeatedly done by one or up to a few players. The result of this glitch was the rapid increase in Dragonstone rarity and price. After RuneScape 2 became the main game in 2004, server resets became less common on RuneScape Classic to my knowledge. Some people speculated that the glitch would be temporarily fixed upon one of these rare server resets, but the offending players would go to the crystal chest quickly and bug it out again before others had a chance to use their keys. Although that last part could just be a rumor, but it would take some ridiculous dedication to trolling. Pure Essence did not exist until April of 2006. Before that, there was only Rune Essence in the game. It had a duller color, and the problem was that Rune Essence could be obtained easily by low-level F2P throwaway accounts. These throwaway accounts were mostly botters that transfer the Essence fairly consistently to other accounts or sell it off before they're banned. To combat this, Jagex introduced Pure Essence, which required 30-plus mining as well as membership. The Pure Essence could be used to craft any craftable rune, whereas Rune Essence was made to only be able to craft the six elemental runes. This effectively tanked the price of regular Rune Essence and made botting Essence less viable. Void Knight Armor was not released with the Pest Control minigame. Initially, Void Commendation points were capped at 15 and there were very little rewards for doing the minigame. I think it may have been just experience and maybe those weird packs. Additionally, the portals that now unlock at set intervals used to be available to attack immediately upon a pest control game starting. This made for really quick games overall due to high level players rushing the portals. Winning a game in pest control around this time only rewarded one point. There was only one boat instead of three separate level based boats, with the excess players piling into one boat in the quick games, Pest Control was a very fast-paced minigame. Up until late 2006, the range and magic combat styles did not have accuracy prayers. In September of 2006, prayers such as Eagle Eye and Mystic Might were released into the game. Before that, it was just the melee accuracy reflex prayers, also known as the brain prayers. When Metal Dragons were released in January 2005, along with the coveted Dragon Plate Legs, the Dragon Plate Skirt was not immediately released alongside them. The Dragon Plate Skirt was added March 29, 2005, roughly two months after Dragon Plate Legs. Another fun fact is the Dragon Scimitar was also released on this date. RuneScape Classic had PvP that spanned across the whole map, barring a few safe areas, making the game very dangerous at the time. In RuneScape Classic, there was a little-known monster called the Rock of Ages. On the wiki, it's referred to as an anomaly, and it doesn't really elaborate much further than that. Toward the end of RuneScape Classic being the main game around 2003, 
three, mining hits were based on pickaxe tier. Higher tier pickaxes would hit multiple times. So for example, I believe Steel attempted five times and Rune attempted to mine a whopping 12 times. This cut down on the amount of clicks and was a massive help to players at the time. RuneScape Classic was closed for the first time on January 15th, 2006 to the general player base. RuneScape members that logged in between August 4th, 2005 and January 15th, 2006 could still log in. Range Combat and RuneScape Classic required the player to save spot. If the player fired without being in a safe spot, the monster would go straight to the player and instead of shooting the green projectiles, the player engaged in close combat with the monster instead. This is different to RS3 and Old School where you can either safe spot or sit in the middle of mobs. The 2006 Falador Massacre is often associated with the Nightwish song Planet Hell. This is due to the main video covering the massacre at the time blaring the song as Duriel slaughtered players. Years later during the event held commemorating the massacre, a cover of the song can be heard playing. The maximum combat level in RuneScape Classic was 123 rather than Old School's 126 and Modern RuneScape's 138. The prayer skill didn't influence combat as much on Classic as it did on OS RS and RS3. Combat experience was received in Classic in a way similar to the Slayer skill. You only got the experience in combat once the monster died rather than the 4 XP per 1 damage formula. Adamant and Rune Armor were not released right away with RuneScape Classic. They were released piece by piece somewhat slowly. There was no friends list in early RuneScape Classic. There was a bug or rather an oversight in early RuneScape Classic that allowed the strength boost from beer to stack all the way to level 99. After this started seeing widespread use, the boost was changed to cap out quickly. Players in Classic used a trick with wine to lower their levels in order to allow them to constantly train on dummies. Dummies had a limit and once you passed around level 8 in your chosen combat style, you could no longer train on them. The wine was used to dip below that and allow for infinite dummy training. The dummies gave around 5 attack experience per hit, but no HP experience at all. This led to really low levels running around with rune two-handers, typically around level 13. This method was later made unusable by Jagex at a later date. At first, banks around RuneScape in 2001 only stored coins. This was changed on the 26th of July the same year to allow players to store 48 different items in the bank. A player by the name of Rab was allegedly the first player to ever log into RuneScape. Upon creating a new character in early RuneScape Classic, you were given the choice between Warrior, Wizard, Adventurer, Necromancer, Miner, and Ranger. Each one started out with their own unique items and minor stat booths. Tailoring was a skill that was going to be released in 2001, however in June of the same year it was introduced as an extension to the crafting skill. The Slayer Dart spell, which is laughably weak nowadays on both games, used to have a spot in the RuneScape bossing meta in 2005-2006. to 2006. It was used at Barrows and Dagonoth Rex frequently. In 2008, PvP worlds had randomly generated drops when a player killed somebody. A good deal of the time, the drops were absolute crap. For example, if a player killed someone risking full bandos, they might only get 100k or less in loot. An update was made in late 2008 to improve what they called the earning potential system, also known as the EP system, which made it to where if a player was actively risking 75k on members' worlds or 25k in free-to-play worlds, they would build up EP percentage every 30 minutes. It would start at 0% and capped at 100%. The higher the percentage a player had, the better the PKing loot could be generally. Players took advantage of this new system by wearing 4 items unscold, with the risked item being over 75k so they could build EP. Whenever a PKer showed up, the EP farming players would simply protect item and keep everything. They would repeat this 
surface as often as necessary until they reached around 100% EP. When they did, they would grab a buddy and have them die with usually 76k in coins in order to generate loot. Some people did it with 25-26k. Upon doing this, they would get generated loot and their EP percentage would drop a bit. With the improved loot, a player using this method and draining their EP would typically make a few million GP almost guaranteed every round they did this. They would then repeat the process. The process was referred to as the 26k trick or 76k trick depending on which method was used. This was amazing money for the time and the loot was later nerfed. There were no Ava's devices to help save arrows until December 2006. This meant rangers were often seen wearing capes and having to either train with very cheap ammunition such as bronze or iron arrows or pick up their arrows after almost every kill. Originally the rune battle axe and the rune two hand sword were slated to be members only items. Andrew had second thoughts and determined that the rune battle axe and two hand were going to be released as free to play weapons and members would get two dragon weapons, the dragon battle axe and the dragon sword, both of which would become iconic staples of runescape classic as well as early runescape 2. One of the most iconic items in runescape, the dragon chain body, had three different graphical iterations between 2004 and 2007. The initial release model in 2004, the second version in mid 2005, and the final version updated in April of 2006, which is currently on old school runescape. If taking RS3 into account, the number of iterations is four, although that iteration came out in 2012, so it really doesn't fit on the list. There was a fire cape graphical update that lasted all of six days. It showed the fire cape upside down in the inventory and equipment interface. It was only in the game from January 16th, 2007 to January 22nd, 2007. Originally in Castle Wars, a player could steal the opposing team's flag and choose not to score with it. They called themselves spies for the other team and prevented their own team from scoring. At the time of release, there was nothing that could be done about it. In an update in January of 2005, Jagex added the take from option so that if a player held the enemy's flag for three minutes or more, it could be taken from them. This was done to directly combat the Castle Wars spy trolls. Special attacks didn't immediately exist from the launch of RuneScape 2, but were added in September of 2004 a little under three months from the initial launch of RuneScape 2. There's a ton of other classic facts that are very interesting. I'll be including a link to an old Reddit post down below that lists out a great deal of them that I didn't mention here if you're into that, and some people even added on more additional fun facts and stuff in the comments of that post. There are definitely more random facts that I missed even when just taking early RuneScape into account. I tried to just stick to anything from classic to around 2008. I might make a part two spanning from 2009 to modern Day on both games if there's enough demand for it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed some of these random facts. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. This is the RuneScape Historian, checking out. Peace. Oh yeah, don't forget to join the Discord server if you want to chat and make new friends and stuff. Later guys.